Got any good luck charm suggestions for Thursday, Jersey guy? I've got no rabbit's foot, no four-leaf clover, the Al Pacino any given Sunday, inches speak, has lost its luster over the years. I guess we just gotta really hope to the hockey gods that the seventh man on Thursday night can get them through with a victory to force a seventh game. Preds lose 3-2 in overtime to the Carolina Hurricanes on Tuesday night in PNC Arena in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I'll trail the best of seven first round series versus the Hurricanes by a total of three to two. Game six, which is now a must win Thursday night back in Nashville, must be won by the Preds or else their season will be done. What do the boys in gold have left in the tank? Jacob Slavin makes his debut this playoff year for the Hurricanes as the Canes try to make sure they don't trail in the playoff series going back to Nashville. I tweeted out at the beginning of the game if the Preds wanted a solid chance to win this game they had to weather the first 10 minutes of the first period Tuesday night so they could take the fans out of it and then play their game and get control of it. Impressively, the Preds had just as many chances in those first 10 minutes as the Hurricanes did, including Eli Tovinen, who, while being stick-checked, gets a great chance on Nandilkovic, but he turns him aside. The Preds were awarded the first power play of the game, and even though they didn't score on it, as I said, what was a good sign for the Preds, what should have been a good sign, is that the Preds were able to keep the Hurricanes from scoring in the first 10 minutes of the first period. And what did doing that to the Hurricanes offense, taking them out of the game and taking the fans out of the game early do for the Preds? Because just under a minute after the first 10 minutes had elapsed, the bouncing pug comes to rolling Yossi at the point, and he just takes a wild stab at the net. And of course, it's the herd line. Yaglov Trenton, who would get awarded with the goal, tips it in. It's one nothing Preds. The officials would review it to make sure it wasn't a high stick. And yeah, it counts. Yakov's first career playoff goal, the lead intact, one nothing Preds. A short while later, there was a tussle between Dougie Hamilton and Matt Benning, and both go off, but somehow the Hurricanes get a power play out of it because Luke Cunnan gets called for roughing up Andre Svechnikov, and the Hurricanes go to the power play. Now, in this game and moving forward, if the Preds can play this type of game where they walk that fine line of trying to be tough and intimidate the Hurricanes and don't cross it, I don't mind that because maybe it takes Carolina out of their game. But unfortunately, with this first opportunity, that doesn't work of trying to walk that fine line, getting this power play for Carolina because Nekesh ties it 1-1 and it's that score after the first period. Almost a minute into the second period, the Preds wouldn't have to wait long to get their lead back. It's the herd line doing what they do best, firing up this team as the fourth line as Colton Sissons drives down into the Carolina zone and gets it across to Yakov Trenton. Again, he takes a shot, beats Nagelkovic, 2-1 Preds. If you had Yakov Trenton having a two-goal playoff game on your Stanley Cup playoff bingo card, you must be pretty close to done or have yelled out bingo by now. Just over five minutes into the second period, Svechnikov for the Hurricanes has a great chance to tie it, but Saros appears locked in and says no. Philip Forsberg gets called for tripping Sebastian Ajo, and the Preds are lucky for two reasons on the play. One, they killed off the penalty, and two, Forsberg is very lucky he didn't get called for Ning. Philip, we don't need you being tossed or suspended for dangerous plays like that. Be more careful. Seven and a half left to go in a second, and Jesper Fast takes a shot. There's a screen in front of Saros. It's in. It appears to go in off of Jordan Stahl. 2-2. Two, two. But wait. Hold up. Coach John Hines, for the first time this season, as it would turn out, as he has never done this before, challenges for goalie interference. Now, I was watching the NBC feed 
of this game. And I have to agree, and I'm totally fine with this. If that's the precedent they want to use on goalie interference, where Warren Fogle was preventing you see, from getting over to make the save by being in his blue crease, I am fine with that. If you want to just allow screens, then that so the goalie can't see, fine. But if you make any contact with the goalie in his blue crease, it should be no goal. Preds maintain their 2 1 lead under a minute to left to go in the second period as Sebastian Ajo gets a great chance to try and tie it, but Soros makes a stick stave on him, maintaining the Preds lead after 40 minutes. Where was my mind at when the third period was starting? Let the countdown begin, I was thinking. NBC had the stat that the Preds are 4-0 when they lead a series three games to two, and that the Hurricanes are 7-0 when they lead a playoff series three games to two. Colton Sissons gets away with a high sticking call in the early part of the third period, which only would have made Rod Brindamore and the Hurricanes faithful even more angry about the disallowed goal if they had gone on to lose this game. And then things would get worse potentially for the Canes as Warren Fogle would go off for roughing. But to the Hurricanes credit, they kill it off. Just after that, Ryan Johansson has a great clear blank chance in front of the Delkovich and he shoots it wide and should have been three one monster block in front of Soros by Colton Sissons as we reach eight minutes left to go in the third period Carolina keeps pushing as we reach seven minutes left to go in regulation and Nickish of the Hurricanes gets past Forsberg and then he gets past Benning and Yossi is trying to watch him as Nickish races past him and Soros Maybe it was a little bit of the ice, but I think it was that he was just trying to guard the tuck-in on that side because if Soros was guarding the left side post, if he had launched off sooner, trusting Yossi to do his job there, Soros would have been on his right post a lot sooner, but because he didn't push off fast enough, Nikas tucks it in 2-2. Two, two. Late in the period, Roman Yossi and Ryan Johansson would have great chances if they, they would just shoot, but they pass instead, keeping this game tied. And we all should have seen this coming after games three and four. For the third time this playoff series, we are heading to overtime. As per NHL.com, this is the first time that either Nashville or Carolina have contested three straight games in a playoff series in overtime. Early in the first overtime, Brady Shea of the Hurricanes would get called for holding Mikhail Grenland. And it was obvious that it had to be called because Grenland couldn't move. It would be one thing if it was just an incidental holding, but he really held him up. So the refs had to call it. Preds don't get to enjoy the full power play treatment as Alexander Carrier would eventually get called before their power play ran out for interference on Sebastian Ajo. And what happens when you're the penalized team, even if it's four and four, the face-off is in your zone. And what happens being four and four in overtime? There's a lot more open space and fewer defenders. So you get stuff like this because on the ensuing face-off, Puck comes to UC Soros who tries to stick it away to the boards for a defender, but it takes a lucky bounce right to Jordan Stahl who buries it. Canes win game five in overtime, 3-2. So close to being up 3-2 going home, but now they're down 3-2 going home. So to recap Pred's history of this franchise to this point, they are 0-11 after they lose game one of a playoff series and heading into this playoff series with this key stat in mind of where this series is at. They are 1-7 and seven in a playoff series where they were tied 2-2 and then lose game 5. I still believe that this team is capable of winning game 6 and then potentially finally going into Raleigh and winning a game. Despite the fact that game 6 is being played at 8.30 Central for some reason, thank you NBC Sports! Make Game 5 in 2008 in Detroit and 2010 in Chicago a distant memory by winning Game 6 
on Thursday in Bridgestone Arena and reminding the Hurricanes that you are not a pushover and win Game 7 on Saturday. I'm not going anywhere. Who else still believes in this team? So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. As always, click like if you liked this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. You can find my social media as always by clicking on the channel name. All hands on deck Thursday night, Preds Nation. Even if this game was played at midnight, this team needs you.